Welcome to Cross Life Church. I'm Pastor Rick Williams, and we're happy you decided to join our broadcast today. Has the grind of life have you tired and exhausted? Has unexpected things occurred that has drained your energy? You're in need of strength today. Well, you're not alone. In today's message, we're going to look at how to have strength when there is no strength. If you have a Bible, we will be looking in the book of Philippians chapter 4. It'll be a few minutes before we get there. And if you do not have a Bible, we'll be showing you the scriptures from God's Word on the screen. But before I bring the message today, here is Mrs. Heather Collins with two songs. Focus on the words of the songs. It'll be an encouragement to you. And I will be right back with today's message. Welcome to Cross Life Church. We are so happy to have you today and hope that you're doing well. I ask that you would just stand with us this morning as we worship our Lord and Savior. Turn it for good, turn it for good, 
Cause I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory For the battle belongs to you, Lord I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory For the battle belongs to you, Lord I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory For the battle belongs to you, Lord I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory Turn it for good, turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good, you turn it for good. Yeah. You turn it for good, God. How many times in our life do we find ourselves tired, weary, and out of strength? We push and push every day to do right. We push to work hard, to care for our families. But with life, we face challenges, some expected and some unexpected. When the unexpected challenges just suddenly come upon us and we are already feeling emotionally and mentally overloaded, what can we do? Recently, I found myself just mentally, emotionally, and physically on overload. I have just been tired, and not just physical tiredness, but just all the things of life that goes on. And like many of you, I just work six, six and a half days a week, sometimes to eight or nine o'clock at night, just trying to care for all the responsibilities and get everything done. And like many of you, always on the go. It seems like there's always something that needs to be done, always some responsibility. And after a while, when a person just works and works and works, you just run out of energy. You just get tired. That is where I have been over the past couple of months. I've just been tired and weary. And, uh, and I know that many of you are experiencing the same thing. Many of you know exactly what I'm talking about because you're thinking and feeling, well, Pastor Rick, you and I are in the same boat. Because you too are tired and weary and out of energy. And when we are emotionally and mentally exhausted, typically here is what happens. Then on top of us being tired and weary with all the daily things that we have to uh, take care of, then there'll be some unexpected problem that arises. And unexpected problems arise in many forms. One form of, a, of additional exhaustion that comes from unexpected things is from other people. You know those people that who want everything their way, and you know those people that they want you to stop and to just handle their situation right then at that time. Or the unexpected change in the economy where suddenly there's no work or people have been laid off and it's the mental exhaustion of how are we going to pay our bills and where's that money going to come in at? Or then it's the unexpected medical report or the sickness that happens many times. You go to the doctor, you get the news that uh, you're dealing with some medical situations or not you, it could be your spouse or your children or your parents. And then the unexpected exhaustion of dealing with a broken marriage or a broken relationship. And what it is when that family that you had is now fractured. So 
Unexpected things come in many forms. And so today, if you are mentally, emotionally, spiritually, physically worn down, then I want to share with you what gets me personally through these times and hope that it might help you. What do I do? I turn to God. Not just in a casual way or in a typical day way. I turn to God with an intense focus, really with a sense of desperation. And I just cry out for help. And I want to share with you an example from God's word, how this works. Now, there was a group of Christians in the Bible that lived in a city called Philippi, located in the nation of Greece. The Apostle Paul had established a new church at Philippi in this town some years earlier. It was actually the first church in Europe. From this very first church, the gospel was spread across Europe and from Europe to America. We read about this church at Philippi in the Bible in a book named Philippians. The book in the Bible named Philippians is a letter that was written by God the Holy Spirit through the Apostle Paul. Now, Paul is away from the Philippian people. He was not there at that time. He's in another town in another place, and he gets word that the people, the church, the Philippians are having struggles. So they were experiencing exhaustion being tired and weary and out of strength. They had other things that they were dealing with as well. But Paul, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, he writes this letter that we read today called the book of Philippians. And one of the things that Paul addresses in this letter to these people was regarding the subject of having strength when there is no strength how to work through uh, exhaustion and mental fatigue and emotional fatigue. Now, Paul was a man that he knew real pressure and exhaustion. He could talk on this subject because he had experienced it. If you go through the Bible and read Paul's story, you will see that he faced some unbelievable challenges. He faced so many heavy obstacles and struggles in his life. And in throughout his life, if you read his whole story, you'll see how he finally gets to this point where he's right into the Philippians and he tells them one of the most famous and well-used verses in the Bible. You probably know it. I'm going to share it with you. We're going to put it on the screen. It's Philippians 4.13. And he says to the Philippians, he says, I know you're exhausted. I know you're tired. I know you're wore out. He said, I know that feeling. I've experienced it many, many days in my life. And this is what he says to them. He says in Philippians 4.13, he says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He said, I've learned in my life, although I don't have the strength, but I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He says to the people in this letter, let me tell you how to find strength when you have no strength. When you are worn to a frazzle, you have no energy, how can you continue to move forward? So Paul says to true believers, those who are true followers of Jesus Christ, that, that they could make it through or endure anything that life would to throw at them by being connected to the strength of Jesus Christ. This is living through God's strength. Not living through your strength, not me living through my strength. This is living through God's strength. 
Now, let me be clear about this verse because some people will take this verse and say that that means they can do anything. Well, when it says we can do all things, it is not referring to us suddenly being able to dunk a basketball or run a 100-yard dash in under 10 seconds. Some people think, well, is that going to allow me to do supernatural things or things beyond my physical ability? In the context of this chapter, it is not saying that we can do supernatural things. It is not saying that we can ask for something and it will always get done or we will not experience difficulties and challenges in our life. That's not the meaning of the verse. The meaning of the verse where it says that we can do all things through Christ who gives us strength is this. It means, yes, as Christians, there will be days and weeks when we will hit exhaustion. Days and weeks where there'll be times we get hit with the unexpected. And what God is telling all true believers in this verse is this, that God will give us strength, listen to me, so that we can endure whatever comes our way. God will give us Christ's strength to go through the times that we are weary, the times that we have no strength, the times where the storm of life is all around us, the times that we're dealing with the unexpected, the times we're dealing with troubles, the times that we think, I can't do it, I'm exhausted. God's telling us here that he will give us the strength that we need to push through, to endure the times when we are individually out of strength. Christ's strength is the greatest strength there ever was. Christ endured a very difficult life. Christ went through much hardship. If you go back and study the life of Jesus Christ in the Gospels, you'll see that he did not have an easy life. And then he endured the death of the cross for our sins. So here's the question. And we're going to put it on the screen. How do we live through Christ's strength? How do we get strength from God that we don't have? How can you right now in a time of your life where you say, Pastor, you're talking about me. I've hit the wall I'm tired. I don't have any energy left in me. How can you get what you need? Well, God gives us the answer to this in the same chapter. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. We'll put it on the screen. Read along as I read. Here's what it says. Be anxious, and I put in parentheses here, worry for nothing. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be known to God. In everything by prayer and supplication, let your requests be made known to God. And I want to focus in on this word supplication. And here's what I want to share on the screen. Follow along. How do we get Christ's strength when we have no strength? We pray. Not just a typical everyday prayer where we might say, God, help me today, or God, watch over us today, or God, thank you for this meal I have, or thank you for this food. This is not the prayer that we're talking about. This is a different type of prayer. This is a prayer what the Bible calls of supplication. Now, a prayer of supplication, what does that mean? Well, a prayer of supplication is a cry for help. It is a humble pleading to our God. It is going to God when we feel desperation or great need and we are crying out to God for his help. It is really a heartfelt form of just pleading or begging for help. Not a typical prayer. A prayer of intense focus, a prayer of crying out to God. Now, let me show you an example of this from the Bible, from the life of King David. If you go back in the Old Testament, you can read about David. 
you know who David is. He's the one who fought Goliath and he became the, the king of Israel. But David went through many ups and downs in his life. David had many challenges. David fleed for his life. David lived in the wilderness at times. He lived in caves. He was sought after that Saul wanted to take his life. He had trouble in his family. He committed sin. He went through all sorts of challenges. So in Psalm chapter four, verse one, show you on the screen, here is a portion of what David said. David said, Hear me when I call, O oh my God of righteousness. Have you relieved me in my distresses? Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. Do you hear his voice? Do you hear him pleading with God? Do you hear him saying, God, I'm in a place of desperation now. I, I, I'm fleeing. I'm having trouble. I'm, I'm battling. I'm struggling. God, hear my prayer. And then we move to Psalm chapter six. Follow along on the screen. A prayer of distress, but this is a prayer of supplication. Here's what the Bible tells us, what David said. Verse two says, have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am weak. You know, in life, we all try to act like we're so strong and that we can do it all on our own. You know, I've done that many times in my life because I'm a person that, you know, I'm a prideful, like you. And my pride says, I don't need help, I can do it myself. And, but it's when we come to a place in our life that we acknowledge that life is bigger than we are. The problems of this life are bigger than we are. Look at our society today and all the problems that's going on just in America right now. We don't have answers for all that. The truth of the matter is, is people are weak and they're frail. And we need to have to admit that to God. So David goes to God and he says, God, have mercy on me for I'm weak. Oh Lord, heal me for my bones are troubled. In other words, it had affected him physically, his troubles. He said, my soul also is greatly troubled. You know, your soul, the inside, of, that's who you really are on the inside. Who you are is not on the exterior. Who you are is in your soul. Your soul is, your, is where you cry. It's where you laugh. It's your personality. It's, it's, all, it's how you think and how you feel and how you react. It's your soul. That's why the Bible says that the church is in the soul winning business trying to win people's souls over to Jesus Christ. So David said, my soul on the inside, I'm troubled. He says, but you, O Lord, how long? Return, O Lord, deliver me. O save me for your mercy's sake. And then he goes down in the same chapter to verse number six. And he tells something that is very telling about his life. And here's what he says. He said, I am weary with all my groanings. He says, I'm tired of the feeling I have on the inside. I've got so much on my mind. I've got so much going on in my emotions. I have so much going on in my soul. I am wore out, just spent with all these things. And he goes on to say, he says, all night I make my bed swim. You ever had that? You ever been so tired, but yet you go to bed and you know you need to sleep, but yet at the same time, your mind is racing with all the things going on, all the pressure, all the responsibility, all the things you have to deal with. Maybe there's troubles, maybe there's unexpected issues, maybe there's financial things, maybe there's marriage things. Maybe it's just some personal issues. He said, all night I just swim in my bed. I drench my couch with my tears. He said, my eyes waste away because of grief. For the Lord has heard the voice of my weeping. <clears throat> the Lord has heard my, and here's our word, supplication. The Lord will receive my prayer. In this particular Psalm chapter six, what we hear is a man that is given a prayer of supplication to God. He's 
pleading with God, God, I don't have any strength left in me. God, I can't sleep. God, I'm tired. God, the burden is too much. God, help me. And have you ever gone to bed yourself and the weight of life is so heavy that you can't sleep? You're exhausted, the burden's on your mind, and you find yourself just emotionally just distraught. I can tell you that I've experienced things like that in my life before too. I've experienced things in my life where I felt like um, someone punched me right in my stomach and then I, it just knocked the wind out of me and I couldn't breathe. And I'm thinking, how am I going to get through this? How's my family going to get through this? You ever experienced that? So what does David do? Psalm 6 says he prays this prayer of supplication. He admits his weakness. I remember years and years ago when I finally in praying to God, I said, God, I'm a weak man and I'm frail. And God, the world and the problems are bigger than me. I can't solve them. You know what America needs right now? America, all of America, every American needs to admit that life is bigger than us. The problems are bigger than us. And that we need to get on our knees as a nation and turn back to God and, and just cry out to God with a prayer of supplication, pleading for God to come in and heal our land. So David admits that he's weak. He admits he is emotionally and mentally troubled. And he cries out to God for grace and mercy and help. And if we were to read further into David's story, we would find the Bible tells us that God hears his prayer and God rescues him. And God renews his strength. That's what David learned. Why did God give us this? So that we could learn. This same prayer of crying out to God for help is the same thing that the Apostle Paul experienced in his life as a follower of Jesus Christ. Paul had learned what David learned, that life is big and it's heavy. And it comes with so many unexpected things. And just doing the daily grind of life can just wear us down. And it was how that they learned Paul and David, how to cry out to God in times of need and times when there was no energy and they just humbly just pled for God's help. And this is exactly what Paul was telling the Philippian people in the book of Philippians who were wore out from life, who had no strength. He said to them, church, Christian, I've learned that I can do all things through Christ, through his strength. I've learned that I can endure through these times of exhaustion. I can endure through these times where it's hard because Christ will give me strength. I go to him and I pray and I, and I plead with God and say, God, I, I admit to you that I'm a weak man and God, I can't handle everything. And we bow before God. And during the time that we are weakest, God then reveals his strength. Now, let's fast forward to today, right now. Your life, my life. I don't know how your life is going, but I know what's going on in America right now. And there's a lot of hurting people. A lot of people that are exhausted. You're, you're your brain it can't think anymore about how you're going to work through the situations in your life. And for me, I can tell you the last couple of months or actually the past six months or year, I've just kind of been out of strength. So what I've been doing is I've just been going to God and just praying. And I've just been saying, God, I'm tired. That's what you need to do. Just go to God and say, God, I'm just tired. This past week, I was talking with someone 
And uh, they said, how you feeling? I said, you know, I went to bed last night and I slept, but I woke up more tired when I woke up than I was before I went to bed. You ever slept through the night and you get up and you're like, I'm exhausted. Like you, you, like you actually didn't even sleep. And some of you are going to say that happens to me all the time. Well, that's kind of where I've been and just kind of emotionally and physically and, and mentally just the gas tank is below E. So I just go to God and I just plead and I say, God, I need your strength right now. And I want to give you that same advice because that's the advice that the Apostle Paul gave to the Philippians. That was his life. That was the, the, uh, the life of David. And so if you're running on empty, then go to God. Cry out to Him. Supplication. It's a prayer that's different from just a typical daily prayer. It's an opening up your heart and just telling God, God, I, I'm in a place right now that I need desperately you to give me some strength. God, I need help with this. And it's just opening up your heart to God and telling him where you're at and God will come through. Tell God, God, I'm exhausted. God, I don't know how I'm going to continue with this. And just humbly plead for God's grace and mercy. And based on the promise of God's word, he's going to help you. He's going to give you that strength. So many times in my life when I was on overload, and I said, God, I don't know. You know, we, we talk about the straw that broke the camel's back. Sometimes it's just, if a feather, one more thing like a feather gets set on you as far as responsibilities, you're not going to be able to take it anymore. Cry out to God. That's our message for today. Cry out to God. Have a prayer of supplication and God will give you the strength that you need. When I was preparing this message for today, I recalled back when I was a, a young boy and even a young teenager. And, and I recall many times that I was trying to pick something up or move something in my life that was extremely heavy. And it was so heavy, I, I, I just I couldn't move it. But I tried and tried and tried. I didn't want to ask for help because I wanted to do it myself. And finally, I just got wore out exhausted because it was bigger than I was. Here I am, a young boy trying to move something that was very heavy, couldn't do it. So I thought, how am I going to move this? And then it hit me. I said, well, I've got to ask for help. So I'm like, I don't know where my dad is. I don't know where my father's at, but i got to find him. So I I go outside, I, my dad and my father's in the garage, and I, and I said to my father, I said, hey, I got something here I'm trying to move. I can't move it. Can you help me? And my father went to where I was and just picked that thing up like it was nothing. I mean, it was just, I didn't have the strength. I'm a young boy. I couldn't do it. I couldn't move it. I couldn't pick it up. But my father just went in there, picked it right up, moved it to where I needed to be, like it was nothing. And you know, that same thing is true with God, our Father. For those who are genuine believers in Christ, you have a heavenly Father. And if we go to Him and say, God, I really need help, He'll do it. The weight of life at times is too heavy. But if we go to our father and say, I can't pick this up. I can't carry this weight anymore. Can you pick it up for me? He'll do it. And right now, I, I just feel like there's people that are watching this broadcast that you're tired, you're exhausted. And you need a, a prayer of, a, of supplication to God. And so I just want to pray for you. I want to pray for you and your family. I want to pray that God will give you strength. And so I'm just going to ask you to just to bow with me and close your eyes, and I'm going to pray for you right now. Father in heaven, there are people watching this broadcast that, Lord, they're dealing with some heavy things, things in their life that they don't have answers for, and they don't have the strength to bear it. People that are mentally, 
emotionally, spiritually, so exhausted that it has now affected them physically. And God, the answer is you. So God, for these people, for these marriages, for these families, for these people that may be out of work, for these those that's going through maybe heartache and difficulty, and they are just wiped out right now. I'm asking you, God, to intervene. I'm asking you to reveal yourself to them, to help them, and to get them through this situation. And from this situation, God, I'm asking that they would learn in their life that they can do all things through Christ, who will give them the strength. And so, God, we, we plead as Paul pleaded, as David pleaded. We, we plead for your help and, and our families and our homes. And, Lord God, we ask that your strength will be upon us. We pray for America today that in great need of, God, your intervention. So, God, you know who needs help, and we just trust you because your promises are true. And you always do what you say you're going to do. Strengthen those who are weary. And we ask it in Jesus name. Amen. Now, you might be thinking, how can I know God? And how can I have a relationship with God? You might be watching and saying, well, I've heard a lot of people talk about God. I've, I've grew up with around people talking about God. But the question is, do you really know God in your life? Not facts about God, not history about God, not you may have read some read a little bit about the Bible. Do you know God personally? You say, how can I do that? How can I have God in my life and know him and feel his presence? Step one is Jesus. You got to come to Jesus Christ and accept him as your savior. You have to be saved. What does that mean? Well, the Bible tells us that we're all sinners. You're a sinner, I'm a sinner. And because of sin, we're separated from God. You cannot have a relationship with God as a sinner and, until that sin has been made right. Well, you can't make it right. I can't make it right. God knew we couldn't make it right. So what did God do? He loves us. And he sent his son Jesus to this world to make it right. How did he make it right? He came to this earth and he gave his life and he died on the cross for our sins. He took your place and my place. He died for our sins. Now, in order for you to have a relationship with God, here's what has to happen. You have to believe in what Jesus is and what he did and how he died, and how he resurrected from the grave. And you have to believe that his purpose was to die for your sins. And you have to accept that into your mind and into your heart that he is your savior. And you want to give your heart to him and you want to follow him with your life. And if you do that, you will be saved and you will become a child of God. But you have to make that choice and decision. God doesn't force it on us. So you say, well, how do I do that? You have to have a conversation with God that goes like this. You have to bow your head. You have to pray to God and you have to say, God, I admit that I'm a sinner. And it was only by the grace of your son dying for me that I can find forgiveness. I believe in Jesus Christ with all my heart. I want to turn from the ways of this world and I want to turn to Jesus Christ and live for him as my savior. Save my soul, God. Make me your child. If you do that, by the facts of God's word, you will become a child of God. Be saved. Have forgiveness of sin. Have eternal life. And then you start a relationship with God. And he becomes your heavenly father. And you, as his child, can go to your heavenly father anytime, any place, anywhere, and pray and talk and have a relationship with him. That's how you know God. And I hope you will do that today. And then Christian, 
Some of you that you say you're saved, you're a believer, but you're trying to live life in your own strength. You, you don't call on God. You don't look to God to help you. You try to do it in your own strength. The Christian life was not designed by God for us to live the Christian life in our own strength. We have to do it through His strength. So I want to ask you, Christian, are you exhausted? Are you tired? Are you on overload? It's time to start depending on the strength of Christ in our life. I hope today's message has been an encouragement to you. I hope it will truly strengthen your life. Get your eyes on God because we cannot live life without God. Oh, you can, but it won't turn out very well. We need God. So turn your focus on Him, especially if you're weary and tired with the burdens of life. You have a God that wants to help you. And if we can help, you can call Cross Life Church, Portsmouth, Virginia. Go to our website at crosslifeva.org. Or if you could do us a favor and drop us an email, let us know you're listening. Your comments are important to us. We would love to hear from you. Also, I want to encourage you to share this broadcast with your family and friends. Many of you have family and friends that they're exhausted. They need some strength today. And you can help them by them listening to this message and maybe it might change their thoughts, their feelings, and their life. And until next time, make much of Jesus, and Jesus will make much of you. God bless.